After opening their season with four straight games on the road, indoor soccer in Rochester returned as the Lancers were the last M2 franchise to open their home season. On February 24th, a sellout crowd at TSE got to watch their Lancers defeat the Iowa Demon Hawks in a key North Division game. Home side came out strong as the Lancers quickly built up a lead just midway through the second quarter. The Demon Hawks got within one goal with just four seconds to play in the third, but back-to-back -back goals by Joey Tavernisi and Tomas Nagy put the game away for the Lancers. Matt Sawagid led the Rochester attack with a hat trick and the Lancers improved to four and one on the season. On Saturday, the Demon Hawks unleashed an incredible 56 shots on the back end of the weekend doubleheader, but Lancer keeper Jacob Mitchell was up to the task by stopping 33 shots and holding Iowa to just two goals. Maggie netted the game winner with Alex Harling, added an insurance goal to end the third, guiding the Lancers to weekend sweep and improving to five and one of the season. Big weekend for us. We had a goal from the beginning of the year to win all of our home games, um, and we started off on the right foot. Uh, we scored early, um, you know, we didn't give up the lead at all. I think that was really important for us uh, just from a mentality standpoint. We always had the pressure on the other team and honestly it was great to have the crowd behind us. It was nice to be in front of, you know, family and friends. Sam did a great job at turning the arena, you know, into a home arena for us. Um, so I think that's going to be a big advantage for us. Now let's take a look at the M2 North standings. The Lancers sit just four points back in first place and are riding a two-game winning streak. They'll look to move up in the standings this weekend as they face the Muskegon Risers at TSE in East Rochester on March 10th and 11th in front of two more sold-out crowds. Lancers defender Jeremy Lonco knows his team will be ready for another tough mashup with Muskegon. Fortunately for us, you know, we've seen them. Uh, we've played them twice. Uh, at their place on the road, so it's nice that they get to come here. But I think the keys are kind of what we've been practicing and preaching all year. We've got to defend well. We've got to put the ball in the back of the net when like the opportunities are there. We can't miss out on those opportunities. Um, you know, we're there to play the game. We got to play the game. We got to let the fans cheer. We got to let the refs ref, and we just got to go out there and take care of business, which I think we can. Uh, we know they're a good side. They just had a nice big win this past weekend, so I'm sure they're you know geared up, ready to travel out here and play. But uh, we'll be ready for it. Remember to visit rlancers.com to watch both games live on Lancers TV. Let's go Lancers!
evening, everyone, and welcome to the unique boutique arena at the I Family Field here at the Reach Rochester Regional Health Total Sports Experience in East Rochester. Welcome to Lancer Soccer. This is Andrew Batisti, Rochester Lancer's historian and the co-host of Soccer is a Kick in the Grass, North America's longest-running soccer radio show. Now in our 29th year in the air, heard every Monday night at 6.30 at WYSL and live on the web at soccerisakickinthegrass.com. Joined, as always, on color by La former Rochester Lancers keeper, current Lancers goalkeeper coach, wall of famer, and the one and only American dream, Mark Sotilli. And Mark, a big pair of games here for the Lancers against the Muskegon Risers here at the arena tonight. Yeah, it's definitely a, a, a huge uh, weekend for us. Uh, we definitely need to get a couple wins out of it. We need to win all our games at home. Uh, I think a couple wins tonight would put us in first place, if I'm not mistaken. So they're very important. At least temporarily, because Iowa Demon Hawks play on Sunday against the Iowa Raptors. So Lancers can move into first place on Saturday with two wins. Demon Hawks could move back into first place on Sunday. But let's focus on tonight. Muskegon comes in in last place, but they only have a minus 21 goal difference. And that includes a game where they lost 19-4. to So this team plays a lot of close games. This had some bad luck. They've not been able to finish their game, but this is a very worthy and very experienced team. Uh, you know, I, I've played against Mustian a number of times, playing on other teams as well. I played with Cincinnati last year. I played against them. Um, you know, their record shows, you know, like one win or two wins, but their their play does not show that. They are definitely a tough team. They will battle you till the end. I think they just, you know, had the wrong side of the stick type per se. And they just lost some really close games. But I, I think they're going to have a battle here. they got a lot of key players coming in. Um, it should be a good game. And they're coming off a big 12-5 to win over the Iowa Raptors, handing the Raptors only their second loss of the season. That was this past weekend. So coming in, the Lancers are 5-0 and overall against Muskegon, going back to the 2018-2019 season. These two teams played twice in Muskegon. On January 6th, Lancers won at 6-3 to on a hat trick from Joey Tavernese. And then on Sun and the next night they won ten to seven, as the gentleman who's going to be making his first home game tonight, Vadim Koyakov, had two goals and an assist. He had a goal and an assist in the previous game, so he seems to have Muskegon's number. Yeah, you know, I um, I actually had to play yesterday at practice because our goalkeepers weren't able to make it for work-related uh, problems. So I actually played yesterday, and uh, I had to face the first shot was from Vadim, and man, he's ready to play. He's definitely a great asset to this team, and you know, his is his home. Uh, this is his first time playing at home, so let's see what he can do for us today. He's a veteran of the St. Louis Ambush in the top flight of the Major Arena Soccer League. And coming in for Muskegon, they also have a new player who has certainly got some qualifications. He is the 2022 MASL number one draft pick, Alex Gomez from Pine Grove, Illinois, picked by Tacoma, but then was sub subsequently traded to Utica, and that's where he's playing currently. And you'll notice him with the blue hair. Yes, uh, so um, another one is uh, Alex Gomez that I'm really familiar with. I actually had to play against him when he played for Chicago Mustangs. Um, Alex is definitely a great player. They call him Sonic, so if you hear me saying Sonic, that's who he is. And uh, the other one to watch out for, I would say, is Miguel Flores. Their leading scorer, 11 goals, two assists for Miguel, wears number 28. Also look out for Taylor Pill, who's on loan from the Milwaukee Wave. He has nine goals and one assist from a defender position, much like Jake Schindler, the Lancers' leading scorer, also plays in the back. Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, he's definitely going to be a, an asset for them. And then they do have Cody Loss, who's in the back, another player that I'm very familiar with. He's a great defender. He will come forward when he has the opportunity, so we have to watch out for that as well. One key to this game, in these two games, when Muskegon was coming into the arena, I heard one of their players say, boy, this is a small field. There, Muskegon plays in a regulation size field. This is a little bit smaller, but we're gonna go to Kayla Clark Kent in right now for the player introductions. Free, vape free, and alcohol free facility. Any issues, please report to the Lancer staff member to guide you. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our unique boutique arena at the Eyde Family Field here at the Rochester Regional Health Total Sports Experience. Indoor soccer is back, and Lancer Mania is running wild. Tonight's game is featuring the Muskegon Risers and your 2023 Rochester Lancers. I'd like to first welcome to the field the Western New York Flash Academy. Two lines, two lines, stop it, two lines. Two lines, stop, no, no further, no further, no further. Just two lines, girls, quickly. 
Please welcome to the field the one and only Lancer Officials for tonight's game Kit Hutchinson, Bobby Johnson, Ed Kobos, and Bajoran Sali. And now for today's visitors, the Muskegon Risers. Number one, goalkeeper, Jake Lofgren. Number 17, goalkeeper, Aiden Hanchett. Number two, Caesar Alayo. Number three, Ali Mohammed. Number five, Cody Loft. Number six, Brandon Edwards. Number eight, Ethan Brown. Number nine, Alex Gomez. Number 22, Colin O'Keefe. Number 11, Ali Shawish. Number 13, Danielle Arellano. Number 14, Taylor Pill. Number 16, Braden Texer. Number 17, Steve Merker. Number 28, Miguel Flores. Number 68, Michael Schmidt. The Muskegon Risers are coached by Ryan Wagonmaker and Michael Vollmer. Please welcome to, to the field tonight's honorary captain, MASL2 League Commissioner, Chris Akonimides. Thank you. And now, please welcome your 2023 Rochester Lancer. Number zero, in goal, Jacob Mitchell. Number one, in goal, in your captain, Dan Maddox. Number two, Tamas Najee. Number six, Alex Vega. Number seven, Jeremy Lanco. Number 10, Jonathan Cohen. Number 11, Matthew Sawagan. Number 14, your captain, Alex Harling. Number 16, Frankie Siliberto. Number 20, Andre Demidev. Number 21, Matt D'Amico. Number 24, Tanner Bay. Number 25, Vadim Kojikov. Number 26, Conrad Zydowick. Number 27, Joey Tavernese. And number 42, your head coach, Jake Schindler. And to meet our coaching staff and our team staff, head athletic trainer, Brian Dickinson, and our slew of assistant coaches, Ray Boom Boom Martinez, Joey Tavernese, John Barada Curdy, Mark Mandel, and your goalkeeper coaches, Mark Satilli and Marcelo Moreira.
Panzer fans, please stand and remove your hats for the singing of the national anthem being performed tonight by Travis Fitch. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave Oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you. And back here at the Unique Boutique Arena at the I Family Field here at the Rochester Regional Health Total Sports Experience in East Rochester, getting ready for MASL 2 action. Lancers taking on the Muskegon Risers. And out at center field is the commissioner of the MASL 2 and the former owner of the Rochester Rhinos and a soccer aficionado for many years, Chris Economides. He is out on the field, and boy, he, he means a lot to the Rochester community, Mark, doesn't he? Yeah, Chris is a, a is definitely a great man, and uh, you know we can thank everything that we have to this day, kind of from him, and uh, it's definitely a pleasure to have him here with us. It certainly is, and he's got a busy weekend, and he's got a great touch Please on the ball your too. Attention to the center of the field, where tonight's <coughs> honorary captain Chris Economides, league commissioner, joins Lancers captains Alex Harling and Dad Maddox for the ceremonial first kick. Uh, try to get a little fancy there, did Great Chris? Great shot. Want to also say, Fans, let's please welcome the viewers on Lancers TV with your Lancers broadcast team, Andrew Batisti and Mark Satilli. And let's hear it for the world famous DJ in the house, DJ Rick Parisi with Marquee Events. I'm Kayla Clark Kent, and along with Soccer CM, we welcome you to the Rochester Lancers Unique Boutique Arena. Risers will be in the green uniforms and Lancers in their pink and white home strip. We want to say a deepest condolences to the family, friends, and the entire Turkish community here in Rochester, passing a former Rochester Lancers owner, Nuri Sabunku, who died in his native Turkey that last week at the age of 90. Nuri invested in the Lancers in 1977 to keep him afloat, and that was the year the Lancers went all the way to the NASL semifinals and drew over 20,000 fans to the old Hollander Stadium when they faced Pele, Beckenbauer, Kinalia, Carlos Alberto, Shep Messing, and the New York Cosmos. He's been a, a businessman in Rochester for many years, Nuri Construction. Also played first division soccer for Galatasaray and Betsikis in Turkey. So we wish his family, friends, and again, the entire Turkish community our deepest condolences. Mark, what do you think about tonight? This is gonna be a big one for the Lancers. Yeah, like I said, I think it's going to be a battle. Um, like I said, uh, Muskegon's coming in with a lot of uh, players that know the game. Cody Loss, Michael Schmidt. I uh, got Sonic on the field right now. And uh, it, it should be a great game. And uh, I'm excited to get this thing started. Jacob Mitchell will get the starting goal. The leading goalkeeper in MASL 2 already has two wins against Muskegon this season. Alex Harling up top with Matt Sawagid and Tanner Bay, Jake Schindler, and, Bat and Conrad Zidowitz in the back for the Muskegon Riser. Jake Loughran, six foot four in goal. Cody Loss in the back with Taylor Pill on loan from Milwaukee. 
Alex Gomez in the midfield from Utica City. Steve Merker also from Utica City up top. And Miguel Flores, the leading scorer. And downfield immediately. Look for Skeen to go quickly, try and get out on the counterattack, Mark. Yeah, they're, they're really known for doing the counterattack. I don't think they're going to have much luck right now with this. Uh, the smaller field works for Jake Schindler's advantage. Jake's first uh, step is like as fast, you know, and he's already on pace. So on a small field like this, it's going to be really hard to beat Jake in the back. Lancers give it away. Here's Taylor Pill. Flores, leading scorer to Gomez. I said, tell him with his blue swath of hair. Gomez with a shot and a big save by Jake Miller. Couple number changes for the Muskegon Risers. Steve Merker wearing 77. <coughs> Colin O'Keefe we'll see in a little while, I'm sure, where he's wearing 22 instead of his normal 10. Here's Gomez, marked by Bay. And Sawaga picks it up for the Lancers. They did hat trick against Iowa at last, or two, two Fridays ago. Thomas Najee from Roberts Wesleyan. Back to Joey Tavernese. Lancers Wall of Famer. And now Vajim Kojikov. Great scorer he is he. Najee with the ball. Najee in the corner of Kojikov off the wall. Knocked away by Lofgren. And Muskegon takes control. No score. 13 27 left here in the first quarter. Ball goes over the end line, and it'll be a goal throw for Jake Mitchell. We'll keep. For those of you new to indoor soccer, we'll give you some of the rules. There's no goal kicks, it's a goal throw, but it's a kick in if it goes over the sideline. Yeah, it's a little bit odd, but that's the rules. Schindler, both an indoor and an outdoor Lancer Wall of Famer. The only modern player to be in the outdoor Wall of Fame. Down in the corner for Korchakov. Five goals in just four games for the Lancers. Weak shot in is it's saved by Lofgren. Here's O'Keefe wearing the 22, as we said. Laid off for Ali Mohammed, who just came into the team. He's from Buffalo State. Headed back by Matt D'Amico is back in the lineup after uh, injury layoff, and Mark, it's great to have him out there. Yeah, Matt's definitely a big figure out on the field. He's definitely experienced. He has a great uh, dummy and he's a there. fighter. He has a great dummy by Matt looking for Harling, but it's taken away by Muskegon. Upfield is Mohammed. Muhammad off the wall, nobody there. As it's wide open in front of the goal. Lancers with Alex Harley, the captain from Rush Henrietta. And Jake Schindler from Rondequay. A lot of local talent here on the Rochester Lancers. Schindler playing it forward and getting it right back. Schindler downfield to D'Amico. D'Amico off the wall. And taken by Ali Shawish, who's the Coach, assistant coach at Buffalo State, also picked up just for this weekend by Muskegon. He actually scored a game-winning goal against the Outdoor Lancers in 2021. There's Gomez with a shot well wide of the mark, but he gets it right back. Marked by Alex Vega, another Roberts Wesleyan product. And here's Najee as the two Roberts players team up to take the ball away. Tavernese back to Najee. Najee is a little too far in front, a little heavy on that touch. Gomez takes control. Back for number 68, Michael Schmidt from the University of Charleston. If you're making out your brackets for next week, University of Charleston, mark him down to go to the Sweet 16. You heard it right here. Here's Sawagin. Sawagin, nice touch in the corner for Zidowitz coming up from, from the back, but taken by O'Keefe. And Schmidt is poked away by Sawagid. Tanner Bay from Webster. Cross field, Zidowitz down in the corner and it's off the netting. It'll be a goal throw for Muskegon. 10.57 to go in the first quarter. Still no score between these two sides. Lancers have won all five games against Muskegon in their history. Three in 2018-19 and two earlier this year. And there's Andre the Giant Demidev and he's called for the foul. You can see why he's called Andre the Giant. Yeah, right? he's definitely a big boy. Uh, you know, I, I'm not 100% sure there's a foul there, but unfortunately you got a big guy against a little guy and they tumble over and that's gonna happen a lot. Yeah. And there's Silberto, whose dad played for the old Rochester Flash in the old USL. Pass forward is intercepted by Muskegon, but won back by Zidowitz. 
And Harling now in the back for the Lancers. Can play any position, really, can Alex Harling. Here's Korjakov. Nice move by Vadim. Shot in and a goal! Lancers take the lead at the 10-17 mark. We'll see who gets credit for that goal. I think it was Silberto, but it got a touch. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Kochikov got the finish on this one. I think he did it all by himself, but um, well, you know, we'll see this replay. Here we we'll go. Check it out here. Nice ball from Harling. And there's Kochikov along the boards. And a nice move there around Ayayo. And the ball touched, oh, and yeah. I think it did go in. So we'll give it to... Kozhikov and the assist to Alex Harling. And that's a big goal for Rochester. We want to go ahead right, you know, right away, and they're just going to keep fighting now. And it's Down in the corner for Jonathan Cohen. He had his first goal for the Lancers against the Demon Hawks in the last game. Harling, top of the box. Back in the corner for D'Amico, and it's headed away by O'Keefe. Played back for Tavernese. And Lancers in control, leading 1-0. Under 10 minutes to go in the first quarter on the goal by Vadim Kojakov, his sixth goal of the season. Off the wall, D'Amico, oh. and shot is over the top by Jonathan Cohen. Nice setup, though, Mark. It's a great setup. You know, uh, Jonathan's just got to get his uh, body over the ball and, and finish it. But, you know, it's not that easy. It's a lot easier said than done. It's five assists now for Alex Harling. And punch clear by Jake Mitchell. Played back for Cody Loss. He's a big boy. Himself, five foot ten, but big body. Ball played forward, rolls into the corner. Tavernese right there with a nice play off the wall. Cohen playing it back for Tavernese. He plays it forward and does not hit the top of the ceiling, which is very low here in Rochester. So that's something all the players have to watch out for. Mitchell long throw, and again does not hit the ceiling. Sawagid. Sawagid takes the shot and goal. Two nil to the Lancers, and Nat Sawagid with his marker. That is number five for him, and I believe the assist is going to go to Jake Miller at Mitchell uh, on I that one. I think Jake Mitchell will definitely get the assist on this. Uh, you know, Matt just finished it, you know, like he should. Nice left-footed, blasted it home. Here's the play again. Long throw for Mitchell. Uh, no Actually assist. came off head, so it's going to be unassisted. Unassisted goal, yeah. Oh, darn. Yeah, I know you goalies love to get on the score sheet. Yeah, I only like the score of the goals. I don't like the assist, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rarity, hits for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, Vanzella for the blast has got like a six or seven of his own. Yes, but he does. What a, what a keeper he is. Yeah, he's definitely a quality keeper, definitely a good name to bring up. Well, Muskegon now down 2-0. And Lancer's pressing for more. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I think this smaller field is really affecting Muskegon a little bit. There's O'Keefe. Along the wall, taken away by Tanner Bay. Bay looking for some help, gets it from Coach Schindler. Now up for Alex Harling, the captain. Alex playing it back. Bay, whoa, right in front of us. Downfield to Silberto, couldn't get a good touch on that one. And recovered by Muskegon, Alex Gomez. Played up the wall. Kochikov, oh, what a move that is. Kochikov on downfield. Kochikov with a shot wide of the mark. But Zidowitz recovers. Lancers still in the attack. It's been all Lancers so far. 2-0 to the home side. Jonathan Cohen down in the corner for Harling. Alex Harling back to Kojikov. And he will play it back for Jeremy Lankow, another local product from Brighton. Same hometown as former U.S. national team coach Dave Sarakin. Cohen down in the corner. Great ball. Lankow, cross field. And cleared back to the keeper, Lofgren. Schindler gets the open. Ooh, that's a dangerous back pass there as Brian Texer was right there. But it gets back to Mitchell now, back down to Lofgren. Midway through the first quarter, Lancers lead it 2-0 on goals from Kozhikov and Sawagid. Ball's taken away. Miguel Flores leading scorer. Flores with a shot up into the netting. That was a little ambitious, I think, there from Miguel. You know, I, I'd like to say that it is ambitious. I know Miguel pretty well. I've played against him numerous times. He will finish those. That's uh, He's a great player. That'll take us to our immediate timeout. 7.02 to go in the first quarter. Lancers 2, Muskegon 0 here on Lancers TV. Come 
Bluetooth.com. As if you don't already have enough on your mind, I'm sure you don't want to worry about the stress of car shopping. That's why at Eyed Honda, we don't lure you in with a misleading low payment, only to disappoint you with bad news when you get here and have you find out that there's thousands of dollars hidden down in the fine print. At Eyed Honda, we're upfront right from the start, so your car buying process can be easy, honest, and even fun. So if you're in the market for a vehicle, come visit us at Eyed Honda. We'd love to earn your business. And back on Lynch TV, this quarter is brought to you by the Eid Family Dealerships. Visit Eid Honda and Eid Volkswagen. Lancers ride with Eid. And there's the throw and just barely clears, but it hits the top of the of the wall, and that'll be a free kick at the top of the box. Top of the D. That was probably not, you know, I'd rather have saw that hit the ceiling than it did hit the there. That's not the place we want to give up one of those. And over the ball is Taylor Pill. Again, the Loney from the Milwaukee Wave has nine goals this season. This one's Three man wall. There's the pass off shot in. Or one there from Flores. That came closer to the scoreboard than the goal. Yeah, that might have went outside the building. <laughs> that's for sure. But, you know, you get you get you get over the you start leaning back, and that's what happens. You sky the ball usually. Lanch is on the attack. Zidowitz. Zidowitz takes the shot wow. just wide of the mark. Didn't miss by much. Lyo goes down. Uh, he's, he, he's not a happy camera. He's back up, though. With Demidev, back heel. Nice back heel across the face of goal. And it goes wide of the mark. Back out and taken by Tavernese. Veteran player played in the original Lancers in the MISL in 2011 2012. That's how far back Joey goes. He's assistant coach as well. And here is the coach, Jake Schindler to the captain, Alex Harley, or one of the captains. The other one is on the bench, Dan Maddock, the second goalie for the Lancers. Here's Sliberto. Sliberto back to Schindler. Schindler forward, Harling, top of the box. Back out to Schindler as Lancers keeping possession here. Jeremy Lankow and Schindler again. Lancers change on the fly. Harling in the corner. Ball poked away by Arellano. And one by Muskegon, Alaya. Playing it back and poor pass there. Arlano does recover. And gets in a little bit of trouble and taken away by Tanner Bay. Playing it back for Schindler. Lancers continue to look for a third one. Schindler with the shot right on goal. And Lofgren with the save with Harling right on the doorstep. He was screened on that one, Mark. That was a nice stop. Yeah, he's definitely screened. I mean, it hit him, but I mean, it, he's he's definitely looks like he's struggling a little bit on the field right now. He hasn't gotten into the groove of anything yet. Here's Lankow, got a little space. Lankow with the shot wide of the mark, but goes to Bay. And O'Keefe gets it, and he plays it forward, looking for Mohammed. Mohammed, sophomore at Buffalo State. Check that, freshman at Buffalo State. Don't want to give an extra year there. Plays for FCY New York in Buffalo. That's a Yemeni team. He's of Yemeni descent as is Ali Shawish, the assistant coach for Buff State, who's playing for Muskegon as the, number, as the number 11. Bay, Bay with some nice control there, still holding it. And a good square ball cross field for Jeremy Lankow. Tavernese playing it for Mitchell. Gets it out of his box there, but playing it forward, looking for Vega, got some room. But nice defensive play as Muskegon now. The chance to counter, here comes O'Keefe. O'Keefe with the shot over the top. 
That was a good chance, though, there, Marcus. They caught the Lancers three on one. Yeah, you, you know, in chances like that, you've got to try to at least put it on goal. You can't give up those chances um, because they're few and far in between. Well, you know, you're playing against the best goalie in the M MASL, too, so it might play on the minds of some of the players trying to be a little more. Andrew, that's cute. only because I'm retired now. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, Jacob's definitely earned the spot. I mean, we have probably the two of the better goalies in the league right now. Ball comes off the head of Kochikov, and he gets it back. Down in the corner for Andre the Giant Demidev. Six foot three. Jake Schindler along the boards. We're going to get some help, and he'll lay it back for Alex Vega. Yeah, Rochester just won't let Muskegon get in the groove right now, and they're just keeping the ball, working it around, finding the open players. And then every time they lose the ball, they're winning it back. Very Barcelona-like, I would say. Good ball inside for Sawagin, and the Lancers <laughs> are going to change on the fly. A little push in the back, no call. Kochikov goes all the way back into his own half. <laughs> and taken away from Gomez, and nice move by Kochikov. All the way upfield himself. Vega, cross-field pass. A little too far for Harling, but he gets it off the wall. Back to Vega. And now Schindler, Lancers will change on the fly once again. Schindler holding the ball. And by the way, you can't jump over the boards on this in this facility, so it's a little slower to get those subs on. Yeah, you gotta make those changes when you have the chance uh, because you don't have the two doors or the, you know, being allowed to jump over the boards. So we definitely uh, should take advantage of any changes we can get. Ball's loose in the corner, still loose. Silberto with a shot wide. Silberto with a second chance. Wow. Nice save by Lofgren on his on his backside. It's actually a great save. Tavernese takes the man down, and Tavernese goes to the deck. Gomez comes, plays it to himself, but Harling's seen that many times, he takes it away. D'Amico loses possession. Flores, Flores shot saved by Mitchell. Great save by Chan, a two-footed slide tackle. No call, so far referee's letting a lot go here in this first quarter. Just over two minutes to go, Lanch is up 2-0. Here's Harling, you can see some of the tape already coming up off the field here. Hopefully that's not gonna have any impact. Harling will play it to Tavernese and he'll go to the bench. At this point I think that would probably affect them more than it would us because of uh, the way we're playing. Shot wide by Zidowitz, a tough angle. And here comes, zooming up field is Steve Merker from Utica City. But it's taken back by Cohen. Back to Tavernese. Again, Lynch looking just to hold the ball here. 130 to go. It's a nice ball. Splitting the defense. Lankow playing it forward to Bay. Cross field pass for Cohen. Cohen down in the corner looking for some help. Plays it back. Demidev shot. Saved by Lofgren. Demidev again. Shot. His into the backside of Steve Merker. Down in front here in front of us, Schindler wins the ball. Yeah, Steve just took a beating on that one. I mean, he just did the full sprint downfield and then came back to take two shots. Upfield, here's Jake Schindler, the coach. Demidev, one, two to Schindler, shot is blocked. And Schmidt with the bell. Gomez playing it forward, he go back and forth, Alayo. Matches get back. Lyle plays a cross field for Sonic. Alex Gomez. I don't, I, 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 don't, I, don't know, I don't know why they call him Sonic. I think it's the hair. I was say it's not nothing to do with the the company, I hope. No, no, I think it's the hair and not, not to mention he's pretty fast paced, but they've been calling him Sonic since he was in Chicago that I know of. Muski with a little bit of possession here with 25 seconds to go in the first quarter. Lancer want to give up one here at the end of the quarter. Alaya back to Gomez. Crossfield pass. Brandon Edwards in the game. Back to Gomez again. Ten seconds to go in the first quarter. Alaya, he'll rip a shot well wide of the mark. And cleared. Alaya with another shot. That hits the netting. Two seconds to go, and that should do it for the first quarter, as long as the Mitchell's clearance doesn't hit anything. Yeah, I mean, if, you know, Mitchell's just probably going to drop the ball and just end it there. And he'll just... A nice short throw downfield, and that will do it for the first quarter here at the Unique Boutique Arena at the Ide Family Field here at Rochester Regional Health Total Sports Experience in East Rochester. Goals from Vadim Korjakov and Matt Sawagid 
early on in the first quarter, give the Lancers a 2-0 lead after one. Back with the second quarter next on Lancers TV. to remember with Salem's Hot Dogs. The Salem family has been perfecting premium meats for over 150 years with hot dogs that snap, satisfy, and fit your busy schedule. So whether you're catching up, winding down, eating in to save time, or simply hanging out, when it's time to get together, it's time for Salem's Hot Dogs. Find them at your favorite grocery retailer. So we're heading out to the Baja 1000. The last time we were there, he rolled down a mountain. Nice. We rolled down a mountain. But if we do it again, do you guys have anyone that can help us out? Absolutely. The Eye Collision Center can handle little dings or scratches or full-on accidents of rolling down a mountain. Yeah, we'll get the car looking good as new. The Eye Collision Center. The Eide Collision Center on Despatch Drive in East Rochester. From small dings to big repairs, the Eide Collision Center makes it easy for you, even the phone number. When you collide, call Eide. Perfect. Welcome back to Lancers TV. Rochester leads Muskegon 2-0. Andrew Batiste, Rochester Lancers historian, co-host of Soccer is a Kick in the Grass, North America's longest running soccer radio show. Now it's 29th year, here every Monday at 6.30 with myself and the legendary former trainer of the Rochester Lancers NASL team, Joe Siriani, and Michael Lewis, who has a brand new book coming out on the Rochester Lancers modern teams. It'll be coming up in just a few weeks, so go check that out at rochesterlancersbook.com. You can also get the historical Rochester Lancers book as well, tracing the team from its origins way back in 1963 all the way through the NASL days to 1980. This court is brought to you by Palmer's. Shop by Palmer's direct to you. Market on Jefferson Road. And very happy my cousin is a employee of Palmer's. Give her a little plug. <laughs> Palmer's. Yeah, good stuff there. Good sure. stuff. Oh, yeah. Lancers will be moving from right to left on your television dial here in the second quarter. Long ball played downfield. Schindler will clear it away for Kojikov, who had four shots in the first quarter, leading the Lancers. The Lancers now shot Muskegon 18 to 10. Five saves for Lofgren, three so far for Jake Mitchell. Down in the corner looking for Steve Merker from Utica City. Went to Bowling Green University. Schindler held, he was so calm on the ball, Mark. Just held that ball, wait till he had the opening and then cleared it away. Yeah, like I said, Jake's uh, definitely gonna be uh, one to watch out for in the back back there. He's so calm on the ball. and He knows uh, you know everything about this, uh, this game, so. Yeah, that's gotta be a foul there. Nope, they're oh. not gonna call it. They're gonna call shoulder to shoulder which is legal, by the way, if you're not familiar with soccer. Here's Schindler, the coach, to Jonathan Cohen. And back to Schindler. Just underway here in the second quarter with Lanchers ahead 2-0 against the Muskegon Risers. Lanchers win both games this weekend. In regulation time, they'll move into first place in the Northern Division, pending the Iowa Derby on Sunday where the Demon Hawks can move back into first with a victory themselves. Lancers will be on the road in Iowa next weekend for two very important matches. Yeah, those two games next weekend are very, very big. Um, you know, so we'd like to get two victories here and then, you know, keep the momentum flowing up into going on Iowa. 
top team in each division plus the best second place team go to the final four which will be held in Mesquite, Texas on March 31st and April 1st. Downfield, O'Keefe with the shot just wide. Ball bounding free, finally cleared away as Arellano looked for a shot. He's had a couple goals against the Lions here so far this season. Here's the shot and cleared up into the netting by Joey Tavernese. So that's going to be a free kick for Muskegon. I'm thinking, yeah, that's a good place to put it. He, did, he didn't actually kick it into the ceiling, so he deflected it. Otherwise, it would be a top of the box. So let's see if, what Muskegon comes up with here. Here comes the shot. That's skewed way wide, but still dangerous here for the risers. Shot right on, and Mitchell with the save. And Mitchell clears it downfield for D'Amico. Matt D'Amico in the corner, trying to make room for himself and rolls to Lofgren. One on two there for Matt, couldn't get by both the defenders, and he'll go to the bench. Yeah, that was a great throw by Jacob, just a little bit long for uh, Matt, um, but you know, again, great throw. Um, a little shorter, I think Matt's on a breakaway. Alayo, and it's stolen away by Tanner Bay. Bay playing it back for Tavernese, now cross field for Cohen, and played back for Zidowitz. 12.15 to go in the first half. Lancers up 2-0. Sawagid has one of the two goals. Plays it square for Coach for Zidowitz. Now Tavernese had three goals against Muskegon. They banged against the boards there. No call. And Lancers wanting boarding. And it's going to be a free kick at the line for Muskegon. Unfortunately, I didn't get a good angle at that, but it sure did sound like someone got boarded. It's going to be a... Since it was on this side of the, on the one side of the halfway line, it's a free kick from the other side of the line. Comes off the head of Schindler. Shot wide of the mark by Flores, the leading scorer. Has 11 goals this season for Muskegon. Rogers win possession. Brandon Edwards. Muskegon's come out a little different here in the second quarter. Here's Andre Demidev. Originally from the Ukraine. Zidowitz and Schindler. Andre's a big, strong body. Sure is. Here's Harling. Played off the wall by Edwards. Harling wins it. Plays it back. Now cross field for Tavernese. Let's see what Joey can do here. Tavernese with the cross field pass. And in front, but nobody there for the Lancers. Taken away by Merker, veteran player for the MASL. Downfield, there's Edwards. Shot in by Mohammed is saved by Jake Mitchell. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot more than that to beat Jacob. He's definitely gonna save those all day long. And you wonder how much experience Mohammed has in the indoor game. He's an outdoor player mostly. Shot is blocked from Kojikov. Tavernese downfield into the corner and cleared away. Again, that's a good point. Uh, you could be a great outdoor player, but struggle indoor. And these are the last two games for Mesquite. They picked up Mohammed and Shawish for these two games, the Buffalo product. Shot is blocked. Appeals for handball, not given. Ethan Brown in the first game of the first time had that shot. Sophomore at the at Calvin University, Division Three school in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And both teams changing things up. Gomez comes off the chest of Lankow. Now Schindler playing it forward for Kojakov. Pops it up into the air and nice control there by Gomez, but loses it. Najee with the shot wide of the mark. O'Keefe gathers and plays it back across the face of goal. And now into the open wing, Lankow's gonna chase that one. Jeremy with the ball, and he'll play it back for Mitchell. Jake Mitchell forward for Demidev, but it's stolen away. Ayala is taken down by Oh, that's a good play. I... Oh, now they're gonna call a blue card at very late whistle on Demidev. At the 920 mark. That is a very delayed whistle. I wish I could get a look at this referee on the far side here. Let's see. Andre actually, Ayo, Andre actually got, steps on the ball. It looks like he did, but it's going to be a two-minute penalty. 
And now they're checking the referees are to double look at this. They're gonna have a little conversation right in front of us. So Lancers lead at 2-0 on goals from Kojikov and Sawagit in the first quarter. About a minute and 15 seconds apart. Yeah, I think what they're talking about right now is it's definitely going to be a penalty, and I think what's going to happen is we are going to see our first shootout. If it's the last man back. There it is. So it's going to be a... And, and boy, that Lancer's bench is not happy with that call. And referee, you can hear, you can hear the... You yeah. hear Jeremy Lankow saying that he was the last man no, he back. Was a, he was 100% inside the goal. So they're saying that he was not, Demidev yeah. was the last, not the last man. This is a, there's no VAR in MASL 2, so it's going to be Cesar Alayo with the uncontested, untimed shootout here. Let's see if Jake Mitchell is up to the task as the risers look to get on the board here, trailing 2-0. The old-fashioned NASL shootout, which was named by Lancer's owner, Charlie Schiano, by the way. Ayala with the shot and a goal. So at the 9-19 mark of the second quarter, the risers get on the board as Ayala with his fourth, fifth goal of the season. Unassisted, and makes it two to one. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing Jacob Mitchell could do. Here's the one replay. On one. Plays it forward and it actually goes five hole. Oh, we actually went to the, just to the, just to the right. right. I mean, you, you can't put it any better. You put it right next to the keeper's feet. He's just trying to plant them and then you put it next to him. It's not much you can do. Uh, I personally don't believe it should have been a penalty shootout, but. That's the way the ball bounces yeah, sometimes. And it's, and it's hard to make that determination as the referees since See. they don't have the, the replays like we do. Tavern easy, Tavern easy still with it. Tavern easy, shot, just, that's oh, a, that's a goal. That's a goal. Couldn't see it there. And boy, what a response by the Lancers. Just 17 seconds after the riser score, Joey Tavernese, the Hall of Famer, scores. That is his sixth goal of the season for Joey. And we'll see. And that's just all Joey Tavernese. Look at this, look at this effort by Joey. He just went down, got the ball, and just. Oh yeah, deflected off number 77. I mean, he'll get credit for the goal. It came off of Merker. Yeah, that was a. Uh off of him, but you know, that's just such great effort by Joey Tavernese. I mean, that's just a veteran play. That's just someone not giving up on the ball. We'll see if there's an assist on that goal. We'll check that in just a minute, but the Lancers regain their two goal lead. That's a great response. Here's Ethan Brown, and now appeals for a foul. No, no, no call given there. Now, if that's a, I don't think it's not gonna, not gonna call a dive, but that's a little bit of embellishment. Reiser now all over the Lancers, pressing in the back. Schindler playing it forward. See if the Lancers can break out here. But it's won by the Risers, and nice play by Tanner Bay to steal it. Schindler looking for some help. Plays it full back heel, but stolen away. Schmidt laying it off. Played forward just behind Schmidt. Shot in by Ari Arellano is missed, and Schindler with the ball. Long cow. Back to Schindler, and playing it forward, looking for Andre Demidev. Just under eight minutes to go in the second quarter. It rises up three to one. Demidev holding the ball, and he'll just play it all the way back to the keeper, Jake Mitchell. Mitchell giving up his first goal of the game on that uncontested shootout. Shot in, and Lofgren with the catch. Yeah, unfortunately, Jacob Mitchell's got to get that into the corner, up higher into the corner. He's probably a little scared of the low ceilings that we have here, but take your chances. I mean, we're up three to one. There's a shot in and nice save by Mitchell again at the shot of Ali Shawish, the Buff State assistant coach. And one again by the risers, Cody Loss. Cross field for Muhammad. And Mitchell will clear it away toward Vega. And now Alex Harling. Harling loses possession, Shawish. Played downfield, shot up, and just over the top. I think Jacob might have got a fingertip on that one. I'm not sure, but it sure did sound like it from here. Texture with the shot, and now a free kick for the Lancers, and we'll have wholesale substitutions. Yep. Oh, yeah, I think everybody just left the field. Let's see if that Mitchell got that. 
little hard to tell. I'll, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, Mark. There's no benefit of the doubt. Jacob Mitchell saved that shot. <laughs> Keeps it three to one. Here's a nice, nice inside pass for Zidowitz. Zidowitz takes up last, misses just wide. Zidowitz regains possession, comes off an arm, looked like no call. Mohammed goes to the deck. Zidowitz still with it. Little shake and bake. Shot is saved there by Lofgren. Back outside, Kozhikov. Now Zidowitz, as the players gather in the Muskegon penalty area. Mitchell gets over the line, plays it forward for Zidowitz again. Loves to get forward from the back. Zidowitz is taken away by Merker. And now played forward, a nice header there by Thomas Naji from Roberts Wesley and to break that play up. Nice little touch there from Sawaga to Zidowitz. Off the wall, Kojakov just behind him. Mohamed playing it back, nearly right to Kojakov, but Muskegon will come away with it. That's an odd red rush, three on two. Jeremy made a great run back. Let's just get back there and Edwards. Here's Edwards again from Davenport University. Number of players from the Risers played at Davenport. Here's Gomez, the MASL number one draft pick from Utica City. There's Schmidt. Schmidt held slightly, no call. Lankow spinning in the back. Still with it is Jeremy Lankow. Plays it forward and too many Risers there and they win it back. Gomez. Gomez back for Edwards. Five minutes to go in the second quarter. Still waiting for our immediate timeout when there's a stoppage. O'Keefe, O'Keefe off field. Play for Schmidt. McCow loses out. Schmidt missed it wide left. He's wide open net there. Flores, but very quiet, the leading scorer. O'Keefe. O'Keefe will just go back to midfield. Schindler will follow him and now cross field for Gomez and back to O'Keefe again. Shindler moving forward, marking O'Keefe. Gomez lays it back for Te Texer. O'Keefe down in the corner, shot in and saved by Jake Mitchell and he'll play it forward. As we continue with no breaks here at the Unique Boutique Arena. D'Amico, Zawagid, Zawagid is taken down from behind and that's gonna be a blue card and maybe another shootout. Let's see. Let's see who the foul was on. So this is a blue card foul. Uh, it looks like they're going to put the ball at the top of the box, which Texel. should have been a, I think that should have also been a, a shootout, uh, if not more than the other one. 4.20 to go in the second quarter. And that blue card is brought to you by Fantuzo Acupuncture. So it's gonna be a free kick just outside the area. And Jake Schindler loves to take these free kicks. He either shoot or pass. Uh, we worked him. on this for about a half an hour last night with different um, scenarios. So let's see where he goes Schindler with this. Plays it for Tavernese, shot is blocked. Lanch is on the power play. Kozhikov, shot's blocked. Back out to Jake Schindler. Why didn't do the media timeout here? I guess they're gonna let it go. Yeah, I'm actually surprised myself. Have to pay our bill somehow. Schindler for Harling, down in the corner. Lankow. Harling with the shot. Kozhikov across the field and a goal! Vadim Kozhikov with his second of the game. And the Lancers lead four to one. There's and the TV timeout. There's our TV timeout. 3.55 mark of the Second quarter. Let's see who gets the assist on that. I think it's going to go to Alex Harling. Harling gets his second assist of the game, and Coach Cup right on the doorstep. Bang. Yeah, definitely Alex Harling. Great play by Alex Harling. And that's his second assist, and the second time he's assisted on Kozhikov. So great combination there. As we take a media timeout, 3.55 to go in the first half. Lancers four, Risers one on Lancers TV. As if you don't already have enough on your mind, I'm sure you don't want to worry about the stress of car shopping. 
That's why at Eid Honda, we don't lure you in with a misleading low payment, only to disappoint you with bad news when you get here and have you find out that there's thousands of dollars hidden down in the fine print. At Eid Honda, we're upfront right from the start, so your car buying process can be easy, honest, and even fun. So if you're in the market for a vehicle, come visit us at Eid Honda. We'd love to earn your business. And we're back on Lancers TV. Lancers with their power play goal from Vadim Korchakov, his seventh goal of the season in just five games, or actually four and a half games, really. And Lancers up four to one. Yeah, you know, as a as a riser right now, you cannot leave Kochikov by himself on a far post because the ball's coming across, and he's not going to miss those shots. He's a proven MASL one talent. Oh, absolutely. Scored a lot of goals. And he's got a hard shot, which you can attest to, Mark. Yeah, I mean, I had to take one of his shots yesterday, and it's definitely he's definitely got power. I mean, he's not too far off of Maurizio Salas. Oh, my goodness. Or Roberto Carlos. Or Roberto, or Roberto Carlos. That's a name from the past. Oh, my. Mohammed. Showing my age out here. No. I won't show mine. <laughs> Mitchell to Schindler as the Lancers lead it 4-1. to one. The only goal for Muskegon's was on a penalty shootout. So Jake Mitchell is not giving up a goal in the run of play as of yet. Downfield for the risers is Arellano. Schindler wins the ball back to Tanner Bay. And Bay up the wall for Zinowitz. Conrad keeping possession. Alex Harley. Lynch is really playing well right now. Holding the ball, keeping possession. Making the risers run. Use up their energy. These teams will play again tomorrow night at 7.45 pregame, 7.30 here on Lancers TV and then into the netting. So we'll have our first kick-in of the day. Taranese will take it as we have a late substitution there. A little gamesmanship by the risers. Sawagid turning with three on, one on three, but and Schmidt wins the ball. Big body at 6'3", same height as Andre Demidev. Far side for Sawish. And now played back for Taylor Pill. We haven't seen much of him today either for the risers. Cody Loss. I think their keeper should be playing in the NBA. That guy looks, he's only 6'4", but he sure stands 6'7". Might be a optical illusion. Yeah. Sawaga, nice ball forward for Kozhikov, oh. just too far. Just looking off for, the mark. Looking for the first half hat trick, much like Sawaga did a couple weeks ago. There's Schmidt, little touch, and knocked away from Sawaga in a goal. A little mix up in the back. And a goal for the risers, making it four to two. Yeah, I'm not really sure what happened on that play. I don't know if there was no talking going on. Jacob Mitchell did come out for the ball as a keeper that I know he is. I'm sure he screamed for the ball and it got. He wasn't happy. So Logan and Mitchell collided. And it's an easy put away. Yeah, that's an easy finish. That's Taylor Pill, I believe, got that goal. Yeah, the risers aren't gonna miss an open goal like that. That's just a gift. Four to two, 10th goal of the season. And now another free, a free kick for the risers. So another chance, risers could pull within one here potentially, change the pace of this game. Shot and a big save by it's Mitchell. Great off save Pill. by Jacob. Pill looking for two goals in a row there. Silberto for the Lancers, 1.30 to go in the first half. Four to two, Lancers lead it. Ball forward and a nice slide tackle there. Deep in away from danger, Vega. Vega goes down and he is in a little bit of discomfort. And referee's gonna stop play here. And that's gonna be a, a delay of game warning for Muskegon as Vega's still on the deck. Generally no, coach doesn't. right over him. Yeah, he's looking like he's in a little bit of pain right now. Here's a replay on that. It was yeah, he's Texier with the foul. And we'll have a trainer come out. 
So let's take a break here on Lancers TV. 117 to go in the second quarter. Lancers up 4-2 to two on Muskegon. And we're back. Vega comes off. Looks like he's okay. Yeah, he came off on his own power. That's good to see. Hopefully he'll return. Hopefully it's not something serious. Lancers being outshot by the Risers 14 to 8 here in this second quarter. And it's 4 to 2 as both teams with two goals this quarter. Zidowitz plays it square for Schindler. Now back up the wall. Nice 1 2 to Zidowitz. Down the corner. Najee shot in wow, a nice a save. save by Lofgren off the foot of Matt D'Amico, who was right in the doorstep. That was a classic football save. He came down with one knee, kept his legs closed, and he was able to smother it. That's a, just a great goalkeeper save. Schindler back in Lancer's half. Won by Muskegon briefly, but now Schindler. 30 seconds to go in the first half. Can Lancers get one here? Devidev, Devidev with a blast, and it's blocked. Schindler playing it back, and he's gonna go all the way back to Mitchell. Flores comes to challenge him, he gets it to Schindler, 15 seconds to go. Jake with the blast inside, grabbed by Lofgren, he'll throw it out quickly, looking for one last opportunity for Flores. But Zidowitz with a nice defensive play gets in front of his man, and looks to run out the clock, three seconds to go. And that will do it for the first half here at the Unique Boutique Arena at the Ide Family Field here at Rochester Regional Health Total Sports Experience in East Rochester. Score at the half is Rochester Lancers four and Muskegon Risers two. Mark, quickly, your thoughts on the first half. Yeah, I think it was a great first half for the Lancers. I think the Risers started to pick up the pace a little bit in the second quarter, so we'll see what happens after halftime. Um, I think you'll see a totally different Riser team, that's for sure. Lancers again, if they win, Tonight and Saturday move into first place in the Northern Division. Lancers were outshot 14 to 11. So Lancers at overall 29 shots, 24 for the Risers. And we'll have some halftime festivities here momentarily with Kayla Clark Cannon. We'll also hear from Chris Economides and also some Lancer players. Looks like Vadim Kojakov is going to get a chance to speak with Kayla who does everything for the Rochester Lancers. Yeah, Kayla is definitely an icon. And here is Kayla. I'm Kayla Clark Kent, and I'm here live for your halftime interview. I'm here first with Vadim. Vadim, welcome to the Lancers. Thank you, thank you. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. We're so excited to have you here for your first official Lancers home game. I know you played a couple, few games with us on the road. What is it like to be a Lancer? It's awesome. Uh, as I said from the beginning, it's a great organization, a uh, great bunch of lads, so I'm, I'm happy to be here. We're happy to have you. Go rest up, and we can't wait to see you in the second half. Thank you. Now here with your head coach and player, Jake Schindler. Jake, what an awesome first half. You guys worked so hard out there. What can we expect in the second half? Uh, for us to keep more possession of the ball and put away our chances. So more goals. More goals. I love the gold dance song, so it's perfect. Good luck, Jake, in the second half. And now I'm here with tonight's honorary captain, Chris Economidi, your MASL2 League Commissioner, and Rochester soccer legend, Chris, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Soccer legend, Mark Caleb, but it's great to be home. Uh, unfortunately, I brought some bad weather with me. I don't know how that happened coming from Tampa, but uh, it's great to be home. I see a lot of friends, familiar faces from the old Rhino days, um, and it's great to be here. Chris, thanks. We're so excited to have you here. You've spent a lot of time helping um, not just soccer all over the country, but also here in Rochester with Sam. You've been a part of this with him and bringing back the Lancers in 2011. You were the MASL 
commissioner at the time and you helped us get our team started. So you are, we have a lot to thank you for um, getting indoor soccer started here in Rochester. Well, as you know, as I've always told my good friend Jeff DeVeronica with the old DMC, um, if every city in soccer had a soccer Sam, I think it would be the most popular sport in America, to be honest with you. But, you know, Sam does this, you know, to give back to the community, it's been good to him. It's his hometown, it's my hometown. Um, and Sam does a great job here with the Lancers. Great game tonight. Uh, you know, Matt Schmidt, the owner from Muskegon, uh, they do a tremendous job back in Muskegon. They, amongst the uh, league leaders in attendance. Um, so yeah, I mean, looking forward to a great weekend. Uh, it's a soccer, hockey, soccer triple header this weekend. Going to see my beloved New York Rangers tomorrow in Buffalo. So uh, we'll see that. And then go to see uh, Utica and uh, Florida Tropics on Sunday. So a lot of fun, and it's, but it's great to be home. That's awesome. What a fun weekend you have planned. Um, you talk about great leaders in Soccer Sam um, in Rochester. Yes, we wish that all towns and cities had Soccer Sams, but I think so far I've noticed this year that under your guidance, the MASL 2 has had a lot of great leaders and a great owners. We had Darwin Salas here last game weekend with Iowa, Stephen Hawks, um, Matt Schmidt, he's not here today, but another great um, owner in our league. Under your guidance, what can we expect going into the playoffs? Well, look at, I mean, unfortunately from a, from a Muskegon standpoint, I think they're in the toughest division. Um, they're probably the best two and eight team in the history of, of soccer, but look at, um, it's gonna be a great, you know, race to the playoffs. We're gonna be holding the uh, final four in Mesquite this year on Friday, March 31st and uh, April 1st. So I'm looking forward to, you know, a great final three weeks, a great final four. Obviously with your help, uh, you know what I'm talking about, Kayla. Um, it's going to be a wonderful event down there, and uh, there's nothing, from my perspective, there's a lot of exciting things happening with them, too. I agree, Chris. We thank you for our, your dedication to the sport, especially to indoor soccer, because we are Lancer Mania, and we love indoor soccer. Well, thank you again, and it's good again. Great to be home, and uh, thank everybody for coming out in this uh, Rochester weather. I mean, I'm not surprised, to be honest, but uh, still a great crowd here, and uh, Let's help build the Lancers, you know, to what they can potentially be. Great. Thank you so much, Chris. And now here's Andrew Battisti and Mark Satilli from Lancers TV with your first half game recap. Thank you, Kayla. Let's do that real quick here because we're going to try to get Chris on the broadcast here before we go to the second half. So Lancers up 4-2. to two. It's Vadim Kojakov with two goals, Alex Harling with two assists. Other goals was Sawagid. And Joey Tavernese's goal right after that shootout, Mark, it was a huge goal 17 seconds after the risers scored. We scored right back. Yeah, you know, it's so important to get that goal, too, because once the risers get the goal uh, on the shootout, even though it's just a shootout goal, momentum can shift at any point. So you want to take that momentum and bring it back to the other side, and that's what Joey did, you know, pretty much individually. Um, so that's that third goal is so important to get right after their goal. Absolutely. So we are going to take a break now on Lancers TV, and we will come back. Hopefully we'll have Chris Economides for a few words, and then we'll have second half action here on Lancers TV. As if you don't already have enough on your mind, I'm sure you don't want to worry about the stress of car shopping. That's why at Eyed Honda, we don't lure you in with a misleading low payment, only to disappoint you with bad news when you get here and have you find out that there's thousands of dollars hidden down in the fine print. At Eyed Honda, we're up front right from the start, so your car buying process can be easy, honest, and even fun. So if you're in the market for a vehicle, come visit us at Eyed Honda. We'd love to earn your business.
Sailors.com. When it's time to eat, make it a meal to remember with Salem's Hot Dogs. The Salem family has been perfecting premium meats for over 150 years with hot dogs that snap, satisfy, and fit your busy schedule. So whether you're catching up, winding down, eating in to save time, or simply hanging out, when it's time to get together, it's time for Salem's Hot Dogs. Find them at your favorite grocery retailer. So we're heading out to the Baja 1000. The last time we were there, you rolled down a mountain. Nice. We rolled down a mountain. But if we do it again, do you guys have anyone that can help us out? Absolutely. The Eye Collision Center can handle little dings or scratches or full-on accidents of rolling down a mountain. Yeah, we'll get the car looking good as new. The Eye Collision Center. The Eide Collision Center on Despatch Drive in East Rochester. From small dings to big repairs, the Eide Collision Center makes it easy for you, even the phone number. When you collide, call Eide. Perfect. their season with four straight games on the road. Indoor soccer in Rochester returned as the Lancers were the last M2 franchise to open their home season. On February 24th, a sellout crowd at TSE got to watch their Lancers defeat the Iowa Demon Hawks in a key North Division game. Home side came out strong as the Lancers quickly built up a lead just midway through the second quarter. Demon Hawks got within one goal, which was four seconds to play in the third. But back-to-back -back goals by Joey Tavernisi and Tomas Nagy put the game away for the Lancers. Matt Sawagid led the Rochester attack with a hat trick, and the Lancers improved to four and one on the season. On Saturday, the Demon Hawks unleashed an incredible 56 shots on the back end of the weekend doubleheader. But Lancer keeper Jacob Mitchell was up to the task by stopping 33 shots and holding Iowa to just two. And we're back on Lancer's TV. And there I am. W, uh, the W from WISL and Soccer's Kick in the Grass and Lancer's Story and Andrew Battisti. And I'm joined by, if, if Andre Devinev would move, there he goes. <laughs> The commissioner of the MASL2, Chris Economides, of course, is from Rochester and was a owner of the Rochester Rhinos, who today, unfortunately, announced they are folding up shop and going out with a whimper, much like the Lancers did in 1980. And it's just very sad. I wish, I wish it didn't come to that, Chris. I know it's got to be very sad for you, too. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to see any business go out of business, to be honest with you, Andrew, but especially, you know, with something that... You know that's been that close to my heart for you know the past 20 you know 25 years um but you know but you know people always ask what we had with the with the rhinos and i just said that it was we had lightning in a bottle yep. you, you know it was it was the right time it was the right you know brand new stadium it was the right scenario but it's, it's a different day and age now um and unfortunately you know i'm sure that with mr and mrs dworkin that the that the financials just didn't make any sense for them and you know, I don't care who you are. You don't want to. You don't want to continue losing money, especially at, at the rate that they were probably losing money at, uh, with no end in sight. So absolutely. But yeah, I mean, another dark day. But I think you know Sam was very eloquent in his comments. You know, the teams that are left, um, let's support them. Let's keep soccer alive. Obviously, Sam's done a tremendous job from an indoor perspective uh, with the Lancers. And then hopefully, you know, we can make soccer the soccer, you know, make Rochester the soccer city that it once was and deserves to be. Let's talk about the final four for the MASL too. They're going to be playing at the world famous Mesquite Arena, which is very well known for concerts and, of course, the rodeo and the Mesquite Outlaws and play there, of course, in the MASL one. How do we, how did you guys get Mesquite to be the host this year? 
Well, Ronnie Davis, uh, the president of the uh, the Outlaws, um, has been tremendous um, in helping you know helping us make the, come to reality. Um, you know, we we looked at the potential Final Four teams, which is still very much up in the air. All the teams um, did not have the dates available, so we started to think outside the box. Um, and you know, I think uh, my my partner Andrew Ross. I uh, was contacted by Ronnie, and then uh, I said, hey, that's that's a great idea. Um, obviously, we're MASL, and MAS, MASL 2 is headed now, is, you know, t totally working under the same umbrella. Um, you know, we currently have six affiliations and or M1 teams that, that own M2 teams. So what better scenario um, than to have the Final Four um, on a Friday with the semifinals? And then the following, you know, and then the following day on Saturday, April 1st, with uh, our, our third place game, which is going to be uh, prior to the to our final championship game, which will be prior to the Mesquite game that evening. That's right. And when the Lancers were in the MASL two, they played in in Ontario for the final four, and then they didn't play in the arena for the semifinal, unfortunately, against the the Crows. But they did play against the Las Vegas side at the big arena. So. Hopefully we'll see the Lancers back there again. They continue to win. It looks pretty good at this point. Well, you know, and I've talked to both, you know, Matt Schmidt and I've talked to Bobby Hurwitz, the Iowa Raptors owner, and I've talked to um, Darwin Salas, my good friend from the Iowa Demon Hawks, who you guys met a couple weeks ago. Yes, we did. You know, I have no dog in this fight. Um, you know, the, those four teams play, in my opinion, as I said during my interview with Kayla, uh, probably in the toughest division from, from, from one to four. Um, may the best team win, um, and I think, you know, it'll be a fun Final Four with any one of the four teams that are in it, a legitimate chance to win it all. Well, we're going to know in about two weeks and one day, or two days, who will be in the Final Four. Chris, thanks for joining us on Lancers TV, and enjoy the uh, games this weekend, the Rangers and the Sabres, and then the Utica against Florida, big game out in out in Utica. Yeah, I mean, I am also have some time with my son, Alex, so it's... Uh, it's a pleasurable trip, but it's great to be home, Andrew. And you, do, you guys do a great job with the broadcast here. Uh, you and Mark are a fantastic tandem, and I can't thank you enough also. Thank you, Chris. It's Chris Economides, the commissioner of MASL2, and we're underway in the second half. We'll get Mr. Sotilli back on the mic in just a moment as Lancers control the ball to start this third quarter, up 4-2 to two on goals from Kozhikov, a pair for him, Tavernese, and Sawagid. Goals for the... Risers from Ayalo on the penalty shootout and Taylor Pill. And we're back with Mr. Satilli. Welcome back, Mark. Thank you. Welcome back. <laughs> I missed uh, whatever Chris had to say, you know, and he's definitely an icon, so it would have been nice to listen to it as well. Um, Talked a bit about the Final Four in Mesquite, which who knows if we're going to be able to attend that one. That would be nice. And yeah, it would the, definitely be great to attend that. I mean, uh, you know, We've worked so hard to be there. We'll see what happens. Lofgren, a good first half. He had nine saves. Six, eight saves for Jake Mitchell in the Lancers goal. Here's Kojakov looking for the hat trick. Lost the ball there, but gets it back. And what a touch that was to get out of pressure. He just is silky smooth with the ball. And there's a bad pass, though. Lancers losing possession. Ayala cross field and Ball comes off of Kochikov right to Jake Mitchell. And once again, what a veteran move by Kochikov. I mean, he knew he touched the ball and he just left it there for Jacob to pitch, pick it up. Most players might have tried to get rid of the ball. And Naji had the chance there and he just put it over the top. Yeah, and Joey just said that in the huddle that we've got to finish our chances. That's a chance you've got to at least put it on goal. You don't necessarily have to finish it, but you've got to get that on net. Make, make the goalie make a save. Upfield by Lofgren to Mohammed from Buffalo. And here is Naji again. From Hungary originally. Back for Tavernese. Another great player, Naji. He's gonna be an unbelievable indoor player if he continues with it. I mean, he's a great outdoor player, so he's just trying to get it accumulated to the game. And it takes a little bit of time to do that once you do. And there's gonna be no, no foul called. Alex Vega, his teammate at Roberts Wesley, played back for Andre Demidev. Lancers keeping possession. Silberto near side. And Frankie will play it back for Alex Vega. 
Uh, Joey giving direction, trying to get a change. Great veteran move there. Schindler. You don't have your goalie gloves here, Mark. You got to protect me in case. I the ball got comes you, out. but when Jake Schindler has the ball, you're safe. I hope so. Matt D'Amico squares it for Zidowitz. Zidowitz downfield. Yeah, off the the ball. Well done. Oh, got to finish those again. Demidev with the shot, and oh, oh my goodness, that's going to be a blue card. It has to be. You can't slide in on the keeper like that. Referee one. I don't know if it's going to be a blue card. I'm surprised. No, I think I think the goalkeeper might have dropped the ball. It was, I think it was a little bit more embellished than anything. Um, no, that embellishment. Soccer gave it to basketball and gave it to other sports. Kochikov. So no, a foul, but no card on that one. Downfield for Demidev. So wish marking him. They were opponents with the outdoor Rochester Lanches, the NPSL. There's D'Amico down the boards. Pill on him, the veteran from Milwaukee. And Kochikov again. There's the shot in, and it bounces right to Lofton. But he's going to take shots all over the field. He has that powerful shot, and any of those can go in. Yeah, he nice has the ability move. to shoot from anywhere. Schindler with a silky smooth move there. Goal. Shot in the goal. That's a goal. That's a goal, and that called. We saw this in the games against Iowa. There were goals that were not called because there is no net here, as you can see. Shot in, and, and that's right. And there's a foul that's going to call a procedure, and it's going to be at the top of the D. Here's that scene again. Let's see if this ball went in. Oh, um, well, it looks like it maybe come off the inside of the post and back out. We're going to see it one more time. We don't have a goal cam here. That, um, it's hard to tell. It certainly is hard to tell. You know what the shot went wide, and shot is blocked by Flor Flores. The shot is blocked. Lynch is trying to break out. Harling. What a great touch by Alex Harling. And he plays it right up the wall. Looks off the wall, looking oh, for boy. Bay. Bay with the shot off the wall again. Lancers keep possession. Zidowitz to Harling, the captain. From Runs at Rush Henrietta. Tavernese plays it for Kochikov. There's a hit from behind there. Sure did get kicked right in the back of the leg. Kochikov off the wall, cleared away. Kochikov again, he goes down. He's getting hammered out there by Muskegon right now. And Muskegon clears it, does not touch the netting. Merker playing for Flores, but won by Jeremy Lankow. Tanner Bay for Lankow. Lankow fakes the shot, gives to Bay. Lancers with possession. Looks like a pull of the shirt, no call. Referee's letting a lot go here in this game. Yeah, I mean, he is definitely letting a lot go, or both referees definitely letting a lot go, and you've, you've got to... You gotta start calling these before this gets out of hand and gets a little too chippy. They called the first game against Iowa and it was very similar. Those are consistent. They're letting them play. Cross face of goal there. Mariko couldn't get a touch to it. And now played upfield for Merker. Merker downfield and Tavernese with a nice interception on Flores. Tavernese laying it off. D'Amico weak off the wall. And D'Amico still fighting for it in the corner. Played out forward for Cody Loss. And Loss playing it up and Demidev back. And then this is where the, the smaller field here is really hurting Muskegon. They cannot break out like they normally would. And it's going to be a foul on Loss as Demidev went down. And I don't think he's going to fake going down. With no, there. I mean, and that's just a professional foul by Cody Loss. He wasn't going to win the ball. He lets that guy turn. Cody's one of their defenders, and then he's out of position. So it's just a professional foul. Smart idea, especially on a big guy like Andre. 9.30 to go in the third quarter. Lynch is still 4-2. to two. Nice little touch there. And boy, Gomez was wide open, and Elio couldn't find him. Yeah, it was just great defense. Way to step in and read the play. Carling, cross field, cleared away. Silberto fakes the shot. Back to Harling. And now all the way back for Alex Vega. You hear the bench saying, set it up. Vega, cross field, nice ball. Bay. Bay inside for Harling. Harling wow. goes down, no call. Vega lets it go for Schindler. And back for Kojakov. I'm going to compare him to a former Lancer player. Seems like in a moment. I'm sure Charlie Shannon will be happy with that. 
Charlie Shiano, another icon in Rochester. That's for sure. Koshikov reminds me of Miralem Foslich. Charlie Shiano used to call him the Iceman. He always touched, had this cool little ball and incredible touch for a defender. And it's a nice, easy save there by Mitchell at his near post. And Koshikov just so steady on the ball. It's like it's stuck to him with a string. It's a tough touch for Sealer Broto. Yep. And nice play, though, to muffle that effort by Gomez. Played up, and O'Keefe, look, it went off his hand, no call. And O'Keefe plays it forward. Muskegon on the attack. Muskegon for O'Keefe, and he downfield, and the ball was, shot was blocked, and D'Amico with it. Plays it back for Tavernese. Muskegon into this game here, but they've not been able to really challenge Mitchell so far in this quarter. Here's Taylor Pill. Right now, I think the Lancers are their only worst enemy. Right now, I see a lot of bad touches going on, not putting your foot on the ball. We just got to control it. Tenger. Cross field for Ayalo and now for Gomez. A very solid player. Hasn't gotten on the score sheet, but you see a lot of the ball here for the Muskegon Risers, the former number one MASL draft pick for the Tacoma Stars. Ball played back for Pill, and Pill again. I think Pill might be wearing a little cologne. I smelled it there, it's not bad. Okay, <laughs> too much information there, Mark. Down the corner for Merker. Ball breaks free, that's a good ball. Alalo gets a great tackled stick. away by Zidowitz. And they're going to call from a foul from behind the play. That should be immediate timeout. Let's see if it is. And they're going to call a free kick for, could be free kick for the Lancers. And one thing with the indoor game, if you get five fouls, it is a blue card. So you can't just foul this game. You have to be judicious with your challenges. You don't want to give up a power play, that's for sure. Ball played forward for Schmidt. Schindler gets back. Nice play by Schindler, forcing Schmidt back. Fighting for it in that corner. Two big bodies, Schmidt and Schindler. And it's gonna be a foul on Schmidt. Yeah, you're not gonna win that battle very often with Jake. He is just stronger than you think. And that's a poor clearance though. Mohammed just wide. What a turn up that would be for Mohammed to score in his first indoor game with Muskegon. Here's Mohammed again, shoots it wide. Skegan controlling play now with 6.17 to go in the third quarter. No goals so far in this quarter, still 4-2 Lancers. Yeah, we need to slow the pace down like Muskegon is right now. We need to get the ball back, refigure everything. That's yeah, gonna be a foul there. That might be the fourth foul this quarter on Muskegon. We'll check, we'll check that when we get a break, but Again, if there's five fouls, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, that's a blue card. You know, I'm not 100% sure on that rule. I, I thought it was five on one player. Okay, well, that would be a blue card on the player. Right? It don't used to be that way. Five fouls in a quarter was a, a, a blue card, but we'll see. Harling down in the corner, double teamed. Harling needs some help with the wall there. And coach asking for who? Four fouls, yep. And it's gonna be Lofgren picking that ball up. 5.25 left in the quarter. Here's a shot inside. And another shot missed wide by Texer. As it was Shawish from Buffalo. And it goes wow. downfield. Very close to hitting the ceiling again. It was very tight quarters there for the ball from Mitchell. Here's Shawish again. And Shawish goes down from Kojakov. Free kick and refer and the Muskegon bench screaming for a blue card. Yeah, it's definitely not a blue card. It's a foul. And a free kick though, and Taylor Pill has got a rocket of a shot. Already has one goal in the game. 5.05 to go in the quarter. And it's four to two. Lancers leading. Two-man wall. Let's see Pill rockets it here. Hope he's gonna pass. Shot in. That's easy for Mitchell. Mitchell downfield, and there's Najee. Najee off the wall, nobody there for the Lancers. Nice little touch. 
but won by Silberto. And he'll play it back for Tavernese, back to Silberto. Marked by Merker, and taken away by Muskegon. O'Keefe, off for Pill. Alayo, and O'Keefe again. Muskegon controlling the ball in their own half. 4.20 to go in the third quarter. Remains four to two, Lancers lead. And ball's lost there and then picked up by D'Amico. And nice tackle by Cody Loss. Lost the ball and got it back. Yeah, like I said, Cody is a veteran of the game. He's hard to beat. Uh, he made an error, recovered. It's a great play by Cody. Gomez with the shot and just across the face of the one-timer. That side of that for Merker was wide open. He just put it wide. Sneegan has taken control of this game in the third quarter, but they're still down four to two. Alayo for Gomez, back to Alayo again, has one goal already. Shot in and off the line and grabbed by Mitchell. Tavernese saves it off the line and that saves the Lancers. Here's Joey, plays it up the wall for Andre Demidev. Here's Andre, a little hard touch, but he gets it back. Looking for some help, finds it from Zinowitz. Zinowitz off the wall, and taken by Edwards. Edwards goes down, no call. Now they are gonna call. Late whistle there, but it was a foul. Free kick for Muskegon, taken quickly. 3.13 to go in the quarter. Gomez. Yeah, again, a late whistle, but you know, they're, they're trying to do the play on. If they had possession, there's two guys back, you know, and you know, they might have an advantage, so I could see where the delayed whistle was. Schindler wins that ball, Zinowitz with a back heel chat, touch, but one by Gomez is all over the field tonight for Muskegon. On loan from Utica City. One by Kojakov to Demidev. Now down for Bay, and Bay's taken down. That's gonna be a free kick for the Lancers. So a set piece opportunity with 2.43 to go in the third quarter. And here's the free kick, Schindler's over it. Schindler's still waiting to play, now does. And gets Still no back. TV timeout, huh? Nope. Harling is back to goal, back to Schindler. Lancers looking to find some room for a shot. Lankow takes one wide of the mark. And Schmidt loses possession. That's a good idea by Jeremy, but Jeremy's just definitely got to turn a little bit more and get that on net, get, get, make the goalie do something. Down the corner, ball died on the boards there and cleared away by Muskegon up to Schmidt. Oh, that's a three on one. Three on one. Three back is Lankow, a nice play. What a save Schindler. by Jacob. Jake Schindler and Jake Miller. Mitchell. Mitchell, thank you. Why is he Jake Miller? That's know. what we'll just call him Jake Miller. We've got Jake and Jake. Sorry, Jill. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. Still four to two. Lancers lead. No goals in this third quarter, but a lot of action for sure. Down in. Oh, it looked like a handball. Hexer, marked by Tavernese, and both fighting for it. Both go to the deck, and referee lets play go on. And Harling nearly got one there. So it's knocked away, but won by Kojakov. Lancers played forward. Harling gets it back. Alex Harling, the captain, plays it for Lankow. 124 to go in the quarter. This third quarter is brought to you by Salins. Quality hot dogs and products since 1869. Lankow. Lankow. Is that Nagy? Nagy, yes. Sorry. Hard to tell from that angle. No, I understood. Gotta get my eyes checked. Like I'm due in a month. I think you just say it just to keep me tested. Yep, that's right. Vega, Naji back for Tavernese. Lancers cycle around. Vega. Is it just Silberto right in front of us? Frankie, little dummy there by D'Amico for Demidev. 40 seconds to go in the quarter. Lancers would like to hold the ball and get one shot here potentially. Go up by three. It'll be a huge goal if they can get it. Tavern easy, 30 seconds to go. Yeah, the next goal for either team is so important right now. This is in. Uh, can't Vega give that gives away. It away. Here's Gomez, 20 seconds to go. Gomez and Mitchell's gonna come out and play the ball. 
Got to get back and go though. Double team by the corner. Shot in, save. Rebound comes in. Another, Another save, save by Great save Mitchell. by Jacob. Bailed him Eight out. Eight second to go. Demidev. Lance need to get a shot off here. Demidev. Vega's got to shoot here. Vega holds it and passes, and that's in the end of the quarter. Lance just could not get a shot off. That goal will not count. And that's the end of the third quarter. Wow. No goals in that quarter for either side. It remains Rochester Lancers four and the Muskegon Risers two. We'll be back with the fourth quarter of action here from the unique boutique arena at the Eyde Family Field here at the Rochester Regional Health Total Sports Experience in East Rochester on Lancers TV. As if you don't already have enough on your mind, I'm sure you don't want to worry about the stress of car shopping. That's why at Eyed Honda, we don't lure you in with a misleading low payment, only to disappoint you with bad news when you get here and have you find out that there's thousands of dollars hidden down in the fine print. At Eyed Honda, we're up front right from the start, so your car buying process can be easy, honest, and even fun. So if you're in the market for a vehicle, come visit us at Eyed Honda. We'd love to earn your business. Lancers TV, and we're at a knife edge here. Four to two, Lancers lead Muskegon. It's anybody's game here at the unique boutique arena at the Ide Family Field here at Rochester Regional Health Total Sports Experience in East Rochester. The fourth quarter will be brought to you by Salvatore's Rochester style pizza. Shout it out with me, Salvatore's.com. Thank you. <laughs> right, right on cue. That's why we're the crack team here broadcasting this game tonight. And here comes the ball off the wall. Didn't come to us, thank God. <laughs> Koshikov yeah. for Harling. So the next goal here, I think, is, is a big goal for both teams. I mean, if Rochester scores the goal, they change the momentum. Obviously, Muskegon's had the momentum for the last quite a few minutes, so Rochester really needs to control the ball and get a goal. Lancers were outshot 11 to eight in the third quarter. Overall, Lancers are shooting at 37 shots and Muskegon 35, so. Again, very even game. Lancers have yet to trail in this game. Harling down in the corner. Alex controlling play. Lays it for Schindler and now back for Zidowitz. And far side for Tanner Bay. Lancers changing up. Silberto on the wall. Frankie playing it back for Tavernese. One touch. Far side for Lancao. D'Amico. And it's taken away by Muskegon, but one back by the Lancers. One cow to Tavernese. Oh, Joey great ball it. by Joey. Down the corner for Najee. And Tavernese again, center circle. Cohen, didn't see much of him tonight. Sawagid has one of the goals for the Lancers. Cohen again. Back for Lunkow. And you wonder. Fitness could become a factor in this game. Ruskin's done a lot of running in this game. How much do they have left in the tank? Risers win the ball. Lofgren comes out of his goal. And he'll play it forward, looking for Schmidt. It's a big, good ball to a big body. Schmidt controls and plays it back. And a steal by the Lancers. Upfield, it's Najee. Back for Tavernese. 
and Lancers will change. And now the Risers jump on Joey and he'll just play it down into the corner. Relieve the pressure. O'Keefe. Lancers with four new bodies out there. Ball played up the boards. Kojakov has two goals for the Lancers. Goals numbers one and four. Kojakov again. Vadim off the wall. Good ball, but taken away by Muskegon and played forward. It's going to run all the way back to Jake Mitchell. Jake throwing it upfield. It's a great throw right over to Kojakov. Right into the corner. Goalies can throw it over three lines, but can't kick the ball over three lines. That would be a, a free kick. Andre Demidev in the corner. Picked up by Edwards. Andre still with it, plays it across shot, and just oh, wide of the mark. Uh, Lofgren might have got a piece of that one. And uh, ball played up to the open wing. Demidev gets back well. And Andre still with it. And he'll play it for Jake Schindler, and he'll run to the bench. Jake holding the ball. Shawish guarding, or marking up with Schindler. Kojikov laying it back again for Jake Lenses with new bodies out there. Kojikov down into the corner for Harley. Good ball. O'Keefe on him. 11.35 to go in the fourth quarter. Lancers lead it 4-2. to two. Silberto. Silberto still with it. Played across for Harley. He's going to run it down in the corner. And See, this is what the Lancers need. They need to hold the ball like they're doing. They took back the momentum. Hopefully they can get a goal out of this. They're forcing the risers to chase the ball. They're spending a lot of energy. Najee, nice touch. Najee, shot. Off just, the woodwork. Just high. Silberto. For Zidowitz is going to call a foul on Zidowitz. Wow. That looked like a shoulder to shoulder to me. Yeah, I'm not sure. We'll take a look at it here. There's Najee with the shot just high. And yeah, he may have pushed off a little bit. Lancers regain possession, Siliberto. Naji back to Siliberto again. Now inside, Cohen. Naji, Naji looking for the shot. Can't find, can't get it across, blocked. Then shot by Samaga, goal! Matt Sawagad with his second goal of the game at the 10.45 mark of the fourth quarter. Gives the Lancers a 5-2 lead. The dentist drills it into the cavity. That's a good one. I like that. The dentist drills it into the cavity. Here's the scene again. Sawaki with the shot. And it's a goal. And I don't think they're going to give an assist on that one. We'll check the official scoring. That was such an important goal. And like that next goal was so needed by either team. Um, uh, and, and they earned it. 5-2 Lancers lead. They've Controlled much of this fourth quarter, have the Lancers. And they're going to give it to Najee, the assist. Uh, he got ball, it's a great tackle. Sawaga, so four on three for the Lancers. Sawaga, so looking for the hat trick. Back for Vega. Vega down low. And that shot a goal by Matt D'Amico! Welcome back, Matt. Welcome back. And D'Amico, just 24 seconds after Sawaga's so goal. D'Amico into the back of the iron at the Salvatore's marker. And all of a sudden, it's six to two, Lancers. And I believe we have a timeout called by Muskegon. Wow, that's how fast this game can change. Yeah, you're never in or out in this game. I mean, it, it, even though it's now six to two, the game's still far from over. Fourth uh, goal of the year for Matt D'Amico. Good to see him back. He was out with a shoulder. Yeah, he looks like he still holds his shoulder a little bit when he's running. I noticed that. But, I mean, you know, it's welcome back, Matt. Like, that's just a great finish, great awareness of where you are. Because in this, in this indoor game, you can score goals in bunches. And you guys are never out of it. But now Muskegon may have to change their strategy a little bit. Because you're down four goals now against one of the best defensive teams in the league. The Lancers are going up just one goal during the run of play, and that was on a defensive mistake. Yeah, and I, and I think if, if, uh, if you're Muskegon, you've got to pressure the ball when it's back in our own zone a little bit more like they were earlier. I think they had a lot more luck with that. Um, you don't want them, uh, the Lancers to hold the ball because we are good on the ball. Well, again, you wonder how much, how much gas is left in the tank for Muskegon. And, you know, they've been running. They, they're a hard-running team. That's, that's their style. It's not like 
Iowa was, where they are very possession oriented with the Brazilian style. This is a an old school MISL type side. Here's that goal again. Vega playing it inside. And gets it back. This is just a nice play by the Lancers all around. Down in the corner, and there's the shot and a goal. Might so just great awareness of where he's at. They gave Sawaga the assist on that. I don't know if he got it if it was Vega, but we'll we'll check. That would be two goals and an assist for Sawaga on that. But Lancers now up six to two. And it's gonna really take something. Of course, the Muskegon did put seven past Mitchell earlier this year. Yeah, so. I mean, like I said, you can't leave Muskegon out. They they might be the you know the worst record in the league. They're in the hardest division. They're probably like like Chris Economidi said earlier, they're probably the best last place team ever. Down the corner at Zidowitz. Lancers need to play smart soccer here right now. Not make any mistakes. The referee gets in the way there. Great and defensive just, play by the referee. And just blasted out of there by the Lancers to relieve the, relieve the pressure. 10 minutes to go here at the Unique Boutique Arena at the Ibe Family Field here at the Rochester Regional Health Sport Total Sports Experience in East Rochester. Lancers up 6-2 to two on two goals in 24 seconds from Sawagin and D'Amico. On the corner is Ayayo. And he'll play right across his own goal. And now up to the open wing. And once again, the referee gets involved. Harling is trying to get that one. It was knocked away by Cody Loss. Back to Lofgren. And now up for Texier. Look how fast Kochakov got back on the play. Nice shot That's there. a great, uh-oh. Yeah, we got a head-to-head -head collision, I believe, between Mitchell and I can't see who that is for Muskegon. Shot was taken in. I'm pretty sure Jacob got a fingertip on that ball yes, as well. Did. Looks like it's uh, Texier for Muskegon. And obviously with the head injuries, you take all the precautions. And play is stopped six to two. Lancers lead it with 9.16 to go in the fourth. Here's the scene again. And it was Cody Loss with the shot and a brilliant save. And then running in there was Braden Texier. And both teams now tending to their fallen comrades. We're going to take a break here on Lancers TV. Score Lancers 6, Risers 2 on Lancers TV. When it's time to eat, make it a meal to remember with Salem's Hot Dogs. The Salem family has been perfecting premium meats for over 150 years with hot dogs that snap, satisfy, and fit your busy schedule. So whether you're catching up, winding down, eating in to save time, or simply hanging out, when it's time to get together, it's time for Salem's Hot Dogs. Find them at your favorite grocery retailer. So we're heading out to the Baja 1000. The last time we were there, he rolled down a mountain. Nice. We rolled down a mountain. But if we do it again, do you guys have anyone that can help sell? Absolutely. The Eid Collision Center can handle little dings or scratches or full-on accidents of rolling down a mountain. Yeah, we'll get the car looking good as new. The Eid Collision Center. The Eid Collision Center on Despatch Drive in East Rochester. From small dings to big repairs. And back on Lancers TV trying to sort out what happened here. Looks like Jake Mitchell's going to stay in the game, but it's going to be, I don't know what they're, that's going to be a drop ball, I think. Looks but, like Jacob might have took it to the cheek. It looks like his cheek's a little bit rosy red. That's nothing for him. He's a big boy. He's taken worse in our practices. I think uh, you're going to see a totally dis what Jacob, he's going to be on fire now. I don't know if there's any problem with his, his teeth, we know that our Dr. Matt Sawagid will take care of it. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. And if there's anything wrong with himself, he's a, he's a nurse. He can take care of himself as That's well. That's very true. Had a chance to interview him on soccer as a kick in the grass last week. And, and he's a very humble kid. Yeah, and a lot of respect for the medical profession. I could definitely not do it. Uh, he's, I couldn't do it either. Tavern easy, 8.53 to go in the fourth. Lancers with a four-goal lead and nearly, there's a giveaway though. Merker, but me and Lanchers get back and double team him. Merker cross face a goal, 
cleared away, but Merkel gets it back. Shot in, and nice save right at the line by Mitchell. And Tavernese got a foot in there as well. Yeah, JC's made a couple bad passes in this game. Um, we can't have that right now, especially at this stage of the game. Mohammed took the shot there. He's come close a couple times, the freshman from Buffalo State. Well, yeah, Keith but you're never going to beat Jake the border wall, Mitchell. <laughs> the border wall. The huh? border wall. The field is Muskegon. And he taken did. by Jeremy Loncow. He didn't make 32 saves last week for nothing. 33. Oh, 33, Shorten my fault. One. I took one for myself. <laughs> <laughs> D'Amico is saved by Lofgren. Lancers win possession back. Well Alex by Vega. Vega. Played forward for D'Amico. He has a goal tonight in his return after an injury. There's Vega again. Downfield, Andre Demidev dummies to himself. And off the wall for Vega, goes over his foot, and Schmidt takes control. Plays it back for Lofgren, 7.35 to go. Four goals down are the risers. These two teams will play again tomorrow here at the arena. Rogers will move into sole possession of second place with a victory today. Down to downfield, one-on-one -on -one with O'Keefe. He'll hold it up and play it off the wall to himself. That's a true wall pass there. That's definitely a great Paul. I mean, that's indoor soccer for you. Schindler to Demidev. Lynch just want to hold the ball here, pass it around, and not do that. Yeah, you don't want to get rid of the ball. <laughs> I mean, you work so hard for it. Uh, you know, like I said, you got to put those on net. We got to make keepers make saves. Here's the that save again by Mitchell and Tavernese right there as well on the line. So we have a media timeout with 7.02 to go in the fourth quarter. Lancers six and Muskegon 2 on Lancers TV. As if you don't already have enough on your mind, I'm sure you don't want to worry about the stress of car shopping. That's why at Eyed Honda, we don't lure you in with a misleading low payment, only to disappoint you with bad news when you get here and have you find out that there's thousands of dollars hidden down in the fine print. At Eyed Honda, we're upfront right from the start, so your car buying process can be easy, honest, and even fun. So if you're in the market for a vehicle, come visit us at Eyed Honda. We'd love to earn your business. Seven oh two to go in the fourth. I want to thank all of our sponsors of Lancers TV. You can see them on the screen here. Hi, Mark Sotilli would just like to make a correction to Andrew. I did not see Joey Tavernese touch the ball. That's just a Jacob Mitchell save. Yes, it is. There's <laughs> Soccer Sam greeting some of the crowd here tonight. Good crowd on a snowy Friday night. Now what is it with son. the Lancers in snow? I tell you. That was his son that he was uh, with there. And it'll be Lofgren now to release for Muskegon and headed away by Schindler. And whoa, there it goes right by us. Thank goodness it was a little high. I thought you said Schindler was going to put it near us. No, no, it was a deflection. Oh, that's why. Okay. So that's going to be, should be a Lancer's throw then. No, I think the guy hit it to Jake and then it was. Oh, I see. So it came off of Jake. So it's going to be a, a kick in for the risers. And all the way downfield, and that's that's indirect, though, correct? Correct. So that would not have counted if it had gotten. No, no, it. that's direct. It Everything's direct. direct. Okay. No, I'm sorry, that's my fault. It was, it's direct. I may be the Lancers historian, but I'm still not completely knowledgeable about the, all the intricacies of indoor soccer. Tavern easy. Cross field for Coach for uh, Zidowitz. Zidowitz goes right over the top of Cody Loss and. But no call, Lancers win it back, D'Amico. Yeah, I'm not even sure that's not a foul, but you know, you play on and this Again, is the way the game's been going anyway. Referees have let, let, let a lot go in the game today, that's for sure. Next, next, tomorrow night's crew though, tends to call the game a little more tight, so we'll see how that goes when the time comes. Dangerous pass by Kojikov, but it does go to Zidowitz. Now Lancers have an opportunity here. Kojikov off the wall, Kojikov tries to control, can't do so. 
Perker, play run by Zidowitz. Harling for D'Amico, and now back for Tavernese, 5.48 to go. Lancers with a four goal lead. When will Muskegon pull Lofgren is the question. I would say they would start thinking about it at the four and a half minute mark to pull him out around the three and a half, four. When you're down by four goals, you've got to do it in the fourth minute mark. You can't wait till like the last two minutes. That's for sure. And one right at, well, right at Nagy. Nagy inside, shot on, big save off to Miko by Lofgren. Lofgren just made a great save and it could be a game saver. Could be. That's Flores. another great tackle. Flores, who has been very quiet, the leading scorer, We've hardly called his name tonight. Great job by the Lancers defense. Tavernese plays it square, and who oh, Lancers got away with one there is yeah, I allow nearly stole it. They're playing Here's dangerous. D'Amico, D'Amico now field, D'Amico, cross field. Oh, just away from Lancao and Siliberto. I would have loved to have saw that pass better for Jeremy, let him finish the ball, he's, he's earned a goal. And a steal. Shot in, not just wide of the mark, by Siliberto, Tanner Bay. Back to Mitchell, 4.38 to go. Let's see when the Muskegon will pull their keeper. If Lanches continue to hold the ball, it'll be very difficult to do that. And taken away again by the Lancers, Lankow. Bay, cross field and intercepted, but Bay gets it back. Devidev, Devidev says, Red Ben says, keep it, keep it. And he's still holding the ball. Surrounded by four players, but gets the pass to Sawagin. Oh, down down Matt with a, with and a, hits with a bad the, touch. Hits the netting, and it'll be a free kick for the Muskegon Risers. Here's that scene again, and a great save there. Kick save by Lofgren to keep it at 6-2. to two. Great awareness of where he was at. They're going to call a timeout soon, I, I mean, I would think. They have one timeout left. They get two timeouts in the game, correct? Um, I believe so, but uh, again... The, We'll see. I don't see anybody putting on a, uh, a sixth six attacker jersey yet, but I mean, you definitely got to be thinking about it. And Keith got a little kick there. He says, I'm, gonna, I'm okay, I'm gonna shake it off. Gomez and ran a run back to that one. I heard him grunt. Schindler with the ball. Nice pass for Demidev. Andre muscles past his man, Brown. Inside, Sawagin lost his footing on the shot and hits the netting. 3.31 to go, and Muskegon still not doing anything to pull the keeper. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, you you have nothing to lose. Yeah, you have nothing to lose, and you don't. You know, you want to you want to come out of the end of the season with you know some victories. So you, you know, you definitely got to Schmidt downfield. They got to call blue six card. men. They got six men on the six field. Six men in the field. That's going to be a a power play, and that's that's devastating for Muskegon. Yeah, that should just about wrap it up. Lancers will try to kill the whole two minutes. They just hold the ball, basically. 3.14 to go in the fourth quarter. That is a costly error. You cannot make that at the end of the game, especially when you probably need to get that sixth attacker out on the field. Now you really can't. You can't, no, take, I mean, that, you can't take that chance. Yeah, you, you've basically just eliminated your chance of Winning this game. Yeah. Well, it's not over yet. Six to two. Muskegon can score. They're getting there very fast. Any mistake by the Lancers. So that blue card, by the way, is brought to you by trying to pick a sponsor here. How about Joe Giuliano and his real estate business? 766-4810, former play-by-play -play man of the Rochester Lancers and the Rochester Rhinos. Joe Giuliano is a great man. I've known Joe since high school. He was actually on my team in high school. And the Western New York Flash, I should also say them as well. Down North Carolina Courage. And it pains me every time I say that. Yeah, it's, it's sad. I mean, it's sad that we lost a great team here, but. Well, now we lost two. But yes. We still have the Lancers, and we have Flower City Union. We're back with their men's and women's team this year. Ironically, it's the teams that wear pink that keep uh, going on. Pink and purple. Or lilac color. Lancers with the power play, and they're just going to play keep away right now. Yeah, I mean, there's no need to even try to score a goal. I mean, just keep the ball for the two minutes. At the end of the two minutes, maybe try to put one in the back of the net, but right now you're just going to play as much clock. I, I think Muskegon has, has thrown the towel in for this game. Yeah, see, you don't, no need to shoot there. Hold the ball. It was a, it was a pass. It was a wall pass. <laughs> 
Harling, two minute, less than two minutes, or just over two minutes to go. Lancers up six to two. Downfield, shot what? in and a header. Oh, that was a goal, I thought. No, the referee was right there and said no. To have an easy one. There's Harling with the shot wide. Schindler. No, uh, come on. Schindler, still with the ball, passes it, and stepping on the ball is Bay back to Schindler. 30 seconds to go in the power play. Matches up six to two. Cross field pass, shot in. That's a goal. That's a goal. Give the assist to Kozhikov and the goal to Tanner Bay. Tanner Bay, what a finish. Great goal. And it'll be 136 to go in the fourth quarter. And it's a seven to two lead for the Rochester Lancers. That's a nice cross field pass there. That's just, that's just great. Bam. Uh, one man advantage play. I mean, you work the ball back and forth until you find that opening and you just finish your chance. That's the second power play goal for the Lancers. Two for two on the power play. That's always good to see. So 135 to go. Lancers up seven to two. Long shot and it's saved by Mitchell. The most crazy thing is they still are not trying to go with a sixth attacker. I think, it, 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 I think they've given up the ship and they're going to regroup and try to get the victory tomorrow night. No, I understand that, but, you know, try to leave this game with a goal with, you know, the sixth attacker or something. Schindler. Lankow. And Lankow back to Mitchell. He'll play it forward. Comes off of Siliberto. Back to Lankow. Good control by the Lancers. They play it downfield, but it'll be Lofgren taking possession. He'll play it up for O'Keefe. Less than a minute to go. Lancers... 7-2 lead, and still fighting for more. Goal difference could make a difference, you never know. Shot, and it's over the top by Lon Cow. I think Jeremy's played a pretty solid game. He certainly has. Ball played upfield, and Coach Schindler will take it and play it down into the corner. 40 seconds to go, Lancers seven, and Muskegon two. I just don't want to give up one here. Merker, Merker cross, shot in a nice block. Looked like Sawaga blocked Sawagid that. with the block. It's a great saves slide the, by Saves the goal there. 20 seconds to go. McKeegan looking for one chance here. Gomez shot is blocked. Yeah, Jake Schindler. Schindler just gave up everything he had to block that shot. I just do not want to give up a goal No, here. I mean, it's a seven to two game and you're still sacrificing everything. And downfield all by himself. Is Najee, Najee, one second. Najee puts it into the goal. Oh, it's gonna it's count. no goal. It's going to count. Oh, they gave him the goal. Najee will get credit for the goal with point oh oh. Oh, I'm not sure that was in. I don't, I'm not sure that made it in, but. <laughs> Joey's saying, give the kid a call. It's an, un it's an unassisted goal. He no got goal. it off. It's no goal. No, nope, look at it. It's no goal. They're going to wave it off. They will definitely they wave that off. They have to cross the line before it goes. There it is. No goal. Okay. Well, sorry, Tomas. But the Lancers win it 7-2 to two over the Muskegon Risers, and they move to 6-1 and one on the season, and that puts them in sole possession of second place in the Eastern Division, in the Northern Division. And if they win tomorrow, they will go into first place and looking for a chance to go to the playoffs and potentially play for a championship. Lancers have not played for a championship since 1976 in the NASL Indoor Tournament, which was won by the Tampa Bay Rowdies over the Lancers. So, Matt, Mark? You know, I think oh. uh, it was a great game. It was back and forth for a little while there. I thought Muskegon was going to stay in the game. Um, like I said, it, it's all about the momentum shift. And once you shift momentum, it's hard to change it back, and, and it takes something special to do that. Lancers scored the final three three goals of the game in the fourth quarter to pull away 7-2. to two. We're going to go to Kayla Clark-Kent with the post-game interviews in just a moment. We'll give you the final shots here in just a second pull those up thanks to all of our lancers media or lancers statisticians here who have done a great job tonight keeping the stats up to date here on the m2soccer.com website so in the fourth quarter lancers outshot muskegon 11 to 6 and three of those went into the back of that they outshot the risers overall 48 to 41 to take home the victory 7 to 2 
and the saves for 16 saves for Jake Mitchell, four in the fourth quarter. So it gives up just two goals. It's going to lower his goals against average even further to keep him on top of the stats there in that category. And that's great to see, Mark. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Jacob's worked so hard in practice. He's been working hard in the games. Um, you know, that's why he's now called Jake the Border Wall Mitchell. And Jake Lofgren with 14 saves on the game himself. And we just need to see if he comes back and plays the second game tomorrow if it's going to be Aiden Hanchett, the, yeah, the other goalie. It would, uh, it, you know, like I said, Jake had a pretty good game. Uh, that's Jake Lofgren. He made Lofgren. some good saves. Yeah, he did make some good saves. I mean, he kind of got left out, out to dry a little bit. I mean, you can't blame the keeper for any of that. It, it, again, you saw Jake Schindler, you know, blocking shots, sacrificing his body. I don't think, uh, you know, Lofgren had that, in, you know, in his side. So, Hopefully uh, Muskegon watches that game back and then they do a little something different and try to you know, more emulate what Lancers did to beat them. So Lancers moved to 6-1 and one on the season and Muskegon drops to 2-9. and nine. The Rogers will finish their season tomorrow here at the Rochester Regional Health Arena and we'll go to Kayla Clarkett. I'm Kayla Clarkett and let's take it down to the field for our post-game interviews. I'm here with number 21, Matt D'Amico, Matt, you've been with the Lancers for a few years. You were injured last weekend, so or two weekends ago, so it's great to have you back on the field. Yeah, great to be back just playing with the team. Great group of guys. You know, we got the job done tonight, and uh, shout out to Jake, two goals again. He's killing it back there for us. Makes it our job a lot easier. And Matt, you had one goal tonight, correct? Yep. One goal. So great to have you back in the Lancers jersey. Go rest up, and we can't wait to see you out here tomorrow night. Thank you, Kayla. Next, I'm here with our captain, number 14, Alex Harling. Yep. Alex, you've been with us, I think, since like the beginning of like indoor soccer, I don't know, 2018, maybe 20, a long time, 2017. Oh, yeah. We are so excited to have you here. What's it, what's it like for you, this journey that you've been on with the Lancers? Oh, it's been fun, you know. I think it's been like seven years now, um, but I'm enjoying it, and uh, thanks to Sam for keeping it going. Without him, I don't think this would even be here, so thanks to Sam. Alex, I think that's the most words I've ever heard you speak. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, great, great, great game tonight, and again, we look forward to seeing you back in action tomorrow. Thank you. And one, one quick thing, Alex, two assists tonight? Yes, two assists. Congrats. Last, I'm here tonight with Tomas Naji. You are new to the Lancers this year. Can you just tell us, I think you have some fans in the house. Welcome, guys. Thanks for being here. Tomas, I take it that you are um, going to college at Roberts Westland. Yes, I'm going to Roberts, and I appreciate to the boys over there. Let's go. <laughs> and I appreciate for all the fans and, and uh, everyone from Lancer's family to give me the opportunity to, to play with the boys. I love them, and it's, it's just a pleasure. Tomas, where are you from? I'm from Hungary. Yeah. And you just came here to play soccer and go to college, and you ended up at Roberts. Yes, exactly. That's how it was. Uh, I, I came to the United States when I was 18 uh, by myself. I, I, don't, I didn't have any family, but I have a new family here, and I'm, I'm so happy for that. And you also have the Lancers family, and we're so excited to have you a part of it. So good luck tomorrow. Rest up, and we can't wait to see you. I appreciate it. And uh, again, thank you so much for the opportunity. Love you all. Thank you, Tomas. Thank you to all our Lancer fans who joined us at the game today and for our many viewers who streamed on Lancers TV. We'll see you back here tomorrow as we take on the Muskegon Risers again. I'm Kayla Clark Kent, and I'm off to save the world. <laughs> and we're back here to finish up the broadcast. Andrew Battisti and Mark Sotilli, the American Dream, and here's Soccer Sam coming over to give us the double fist bump. By the way, we're going to give a shout out to Sam if you if you're a member of or you subscribe to Spectrum and get the app Spectrum TV app Sam had two interviews talking about his weight loss and in in conjunction with the the Buffalo Bills player and the yeah. owner who have had some serious health problems so definitely check that out Sam is one of the bravest people I know coming back from what what he went through and it, it's it, amazing he's just an amazing man I've known Sam since I was a young kid and uh you know he's always been a great person he's been he's a good friend and you know and what he's done for rochester in this sport is amazing and 
you know, people may not know the whole story, but if you read about it, you know about it. If you lived here, you would understand. Well, they, he goes into it in detail at, at Spectrum. It was on Spectrum News this past week, so definitely check that out. Here's the whole story about what happened with Sam and his, his health situation, how he came back from it. But Lancers led tonight by Matt Sawagid, two goals and an assist. Alex Holland, we thought, had two assists, but they took one away. Hopefully they'll give it back. Vadim Kornikov had two goals, and we thought he had an assist too, but they didn't give it to him. I don't know who's, who's doing who's the official scorer is, but we'll hopefully we'll, 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 care, we'll take care of that tomorrow. Joey Tavernese ended up having the game-winning goal, and what an individual effort that was, that goal from him. When he basically had the ball, went, to, went down to the ground, kept possession, turned, and scored. Right after the risers scored, it made it three to one. Yeah, that was such an important goal too, because the risers had did have a little bit of control for the while there. So Joey doing that individual effort, making things happen, and then he finishes it himself. I mean, that's just a veteran player, and that's just a guy that that's a will to win. And that made it four, three to one. That was again the game-winning goal. Matt D'Amico scored as well as Tanner Bay late in the game to make it a 72 game. We thought Thomas Najee got a goal, but it just did not go in before the final buzzer. So it's a 72 win for the Lancers. Here's some of the highlights. Here's the here's Joey Here's Tavernese's Joey Tavernese's game and goal. What an effort by him. And that's a veteran play. U.S. international futsal player. And that was a huge goal just coming just 17 seconds after the risers scored on a somewhat controversial penalty shootout goal yeah, and after the goal you can see his intensity in his face i mean his, his celebration yeah he was just he's you know like i got this you know and uh you know you need a veteran player like that on every team you certainly do and so the lancers move to again with six and one in the season they'll come up against muskegon again tomorrow evening at 7 45 kickoff 7 30 pregame here on lancers tv final thoughts mark um, you know, hopefully we continue the momentum uh, for tomorrow's game. Um, I'm sure Muskegon's going to make some changes. Um, you know, they played a good game. Don't take anything away from them. Um, I think it's all about finishing your chances. Um, again, you know, Jake Mitchell had a great game. You know, I don't think he had to make all the greater saves that he made last week, but the saves he did make were so important to keep us into the game. It was, and he, you know, nothing you can do on the shootout. There was just the one mistake the Lancers made in defense, and they paid for it with a goal, but... Other than that, it was a, a defensive stellar performance by Atlanta. You know what they say, Mark? Defense wins championships. Uh, defense 100% wins championships. Again, I can't say enough for Jake Schindler. I mean, just sacrificing his body at a 7-2 to two game. 7-2, to two, and he's still putting it out there. I mean, he could get injured, and, and he just didn't care because it's, it's all about keeping the momentum going. And hopefully Jake is okay. He did have a, a collision late in the fourth quarter with Brad, Braden Tex, Texier from the from the from the risers it looked like they're both okay but we'll we'll see what happens tomorrow we'll see who coach jake schindler puts in the goal tomorrow for the lancers they take on muskegon and that's going to do it for our broadcast i want to thank lancers owner soccer sam fantuzo lancers president and gm kayla clark kent executive producer of lancers tv ashley maria king enjoying the beautiful warm weather unlike us Lancers coach Jake Schindler, Lancers TV producer Joel Balthauser, with assistants Dante Salino and DJ Vela. Setup team led by Rebecca Dodge and Chris Camilleri. Our color commentator Mark Sotilli. All of our sponsors, as you see on the screen, and all of you for watching. Our next broadcast of Lancers Soccer on Lancers TV tomorrow night. Lancers once again host the Muskegon Risers. Pre-game at 7.30, first kick at 7.45. Once again, the final score from the Unique Boutique Arena at the Eyde Family Field here at the Rochester Regional Health Total Sports Experience in East Rochester. Rochester Lancers 7, Muskegon Risers 2. For Mark Sotilli and Amanda Batisti, have a good night, everyone.